Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most as the brand new self-appointed purely king, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that WCQ invite subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder with our invite, ladies and gentlemen. We came in 29th place, probably could have been seventh place if I had played uh, my game three of my last round, which is round eight against Cash Tira, a little bit differently. I may have been able to pull out a win, but regardless, to me, an invite is an invite. If you get your invite to me, you top. I know it's technically top eight or top 16, whatever the fuck. I don't care. I got my invite. I got to give some shout outs real quick. Shout out to all the people I played. Shout out to the purely mirror match that I got my ass kicked in, which I probably should have just, uh, since I opened up with Red Resonator, just, you know got sprite double cross with jet and then activated double cross and got red resonator and win from there um but regardless it was a great match i just think i could have played it a little bit better but shout out to uh Furman, really cool guy he was the other uh purely player he's actually playing pure purely whereas we were playing sprite purely um and <laughs> he carried my fat ass on his back throughout that event going x11 i believe he won the last round i don't recall uh, but regardless, um, thanks to him, uh, I think that's why I topped since I only lost to him and then my last round opponent against Cash Tira, who he came in 7th place. So if we would have won, we probably would have came in 7th place. Anyway, if you didn't keep up with my community posts, um, then you wouldn't know what my matchups were. Um, but just to go through them real quick, uh, round 1 was Sword Soul. We 2 owed that. Uh, round 2 was Branded. We also 2 owed that. Uh, round 3 was Cash Tira. We went to 3 games. And uh, I ended up winning that. Uh, and then let's see. Round four uh, was against uh, Furman. Uh, shout out to him. We lost that. So we were three and one. Then we played against uh, Branded. We got a draw. Uh, game two was really fucking long. So we were three, one, one. And then we ended up playing against Dino Morphia, who was a player from Sunshine Games. I believe his name was Matthew. I hope I didn't get your name wrong, man. Really cool dude. He actually basically ended up giving me the win once I told him I didn't have my invite. I was going for game anyway because I feather dustered his back bro, uh, and he was under shifter. Um, so he had like four in the back row, so we did that. And then he was sitting on the bird fusion at the 2,500 defense thing, Dino Morphia. So we won that. We were 4-1-1. Then we went against Branded again. We were 5-1-1, losing the last round to Cash Tira, going 5-2-1. One. This deck kills Branded, ladies and gentlemen. Like, if you want to have a good Branded matchup, play this deck. So, um, really quick, though, before we get into the profile, I do want to say, if you can fit in Sprite Gamma Burst in this deck, this is a 41-card main deck, so either as a 40-second card or in a side deck, um, you want to play Gamma Burst, because I, I found myself having a hard time OTKing whenever I was going second. I would either leave my opponent like a 1,000 or 1,300, and I think if I had Gamma Burst, I think it could have gotten me there. So, let's go ahead and go on into this deck list here. Which, funny enough, this build was at, this deck was actually inspired by the build that played purely Sprite at the YCS, um, where like he was playing Nibiru and like double droll and stuff, and then I just changed the build from there uh, because I didn't like the going second build, so I really wanted to go with something for going first that could just make disgusting boards, and I didn't feel like going second was the choice was the right call rather. So we're playing three purely. And then three Lily. I feel like six Eevees is the best way to play this deck. Uh, a lot of people were just playing two. And to me, I'm just like, why? Like, if I want to play two, I'll side deck it out, which I did side deck out one going second after game one uh, if I knew I was going second. But even if you open up multiple, like, they're just discard fodder. You can get them back with purely leap. Like, I would rather have multiple names. It's actually funny because uh, in the last round, Game two, I got game one. Uh, in game two, I side decked out a Lily like I was doing for my normal sides for going second. And then the cashier guy made me go first. I'm like, oh, well, of course, that's the first time that's happened all day. Had I had this third Lily, I may have been able to win that game because I had a, I think, pretty memory in hand. I could have played it, ditched a card, gotten out Lily, made beauty, sucked up his card, and then like I could have been able to control the board from there, make a down, make a Zeus. So I, I think side decking that out was a bad choice since he made me go first. But I mean, I didn't know he was going to make me go first. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, then we are, of course, playing the sprite engine with double blue i feel like this is perfect you can get it with starter get it with gigantic um it's it's really really good uh one jet and then we're playing the one red with the one carrot so let's kind of talk about this i don't know why the two builds that i saw i believe were both from kong's cards um and they were side decking carrot and i don't know why because in your end boards you don't have a negate for spells and traps. Like, you can end on, like, red, beauty. Ideally, you want to have leap and double cross in your back row. Like, that's your main end goal mission in life. 
uh, and you might have like a plump and some other stuff. And like, yeah, you can like shotgun the leap. Like if they Raigeki you to go into Noir, like that's cool. But I would rather at least be able to have something for like a fucking evenly match or something. Like th this card being in the main deck was so damn good. And it's another target that you can use for your second starter. Like if you already use your first starter on something and like you still have a target in the deck, it gives you access to another level two. I felt like this was just absolutely perfect. I love this engine. Do not side deck carrot. It's the one way that you have spell and trap removal. So like my end boards, like especially whenever I went first against my round seven branded opponent, I finally won the die roll. I only won the die roll like three freaking times. Um, my end board was carrot, red, uh, sprint, beauty, gigantic, and then I think also had my friend, and then I definitely had purely leap and sprite double cross in the back row. Like it, it was disgusting. I think I also did gym buster. Like I had six or seven interruptions. He wasn't able to play through shit. Uh, we ended up just two owing him. It, it it was beautiful. I just oh, it was it was gorgeous. Uh, and then we're playing another broken engine, uh, so we're playing the three beavers, and then the two anglers. So yes, you can chain block the shit out of people in this deck. So if you open up a purely quick play, like let's say you open up Sleepy Memory, you go draw phase, activate the Sleepy, ask for a response. Uh, they say no. You ditch angler and you summon Lily. You can then declare your chains. So you can go like Angler, Chain Link 1, Lily, Chain Link 2, or whichever one you want to prioritize. And then it can play around Ash. So like if you want to guarantee yourself to getting to two beavers, then just do uh, Angler 1, Lily 2. If they Ash the Lily, like fine, who cares? You get out your two beavers. You can uh, link off a beaver and a Lily into Sprint, since Sprint only requires one level rank or Link 2. You can dump the other Angler, go for the third beaver, and then you can do Sprint and a beaver and a Gigantic to have 3200 attack if you're you know going second and you want to try an OTK. Uh, this engine was so damn good. Like, if I didn't have any plays, like, I just kind of opened up a couple purely monsters, and, like, I want to have some sort of access to my level 2 engine, just summon Beaver. They, they want to hand trap me? Fine. Cool. Who cares? I'll just, you know, tag into my purely engine, or I'll go my friend and search a quick play. Like, I, I don't care. If I can get at least one level 2 up, that gives me access to sprint with any other monster, and then I can dump Angler to go for the other two Beavers. Like, I, I, I don't care. Uh, anytime I saw Beaver, I was squealing like a schoolgirl. It was fantastic. Uh, and then we're also playing three Ash Blossom to round off the monsters. We're also playing three Imperm, spoiler alert. So we played six Hand Traps in this deck. The most I ever drew off the Sleepy Memories was four cards, and, like, it only ever hit me... That was in round seven against Branded, and I drew into two Imperm, a Pretty Memory, and something else. Like, I wasn't drawing a shit ton of Hand Traps. I really didn't draw much off of the Sleepy Memories. It never really came up. Three copies of My Friend. Uh, I signed out one going second, because um, you just don't want to see it as much going second. This card's disgusting. Uh, also, remember that it does activate and damage step, and my dumbass, until I played against uh, the Purely Mirror, uh, my dumbass thought that whatever card you grabbed off of the three that you pick, you had to show to your opponent. You actually don't. It didn't cost me any games. I was just playing it wrong. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm dumb. We're supposed to we're supposed to be the one person in the world who knows Purely Inside now. Uh, the Dynamorphia player actually had to read my cards. So I was like, okay, well, that's good. I have to read his. He has to read mine. Hopefully that can kind of at least give me an edge. Uh, and then three pretty, uh, it's it's disgusting. It was actually funny because in the Dino Morphia match, um, he got out Rextrum and he actually shotgunned the quick effect um, to decrease my monster attacks and stuff. And I went, okay, um, I'll go ahead and activate pretty on resolution of that so that we both gain a thousand. He's like, I didn't know you had a way to gain life points in that deck. I'm like, yeah, I do. This was my one out. So I had a little bit more leeway with my monster effect. So I was able to break his board. That, that pretty memory is literally what saved me that game, if I'm being honest. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Happy Memory. The happiness OTK and like cutting monsters attacks in half, uh, using Delicious to make a monster not be able to be destroyed by Val, never came up. It just never came up. Um, I knew that it was there. It just, a lot of times I went second because I only won the die roll three fucking times. So like majority of the time I was just going second just using this to like protect my friend, like in case they wanted to ogre it or pop it or something. Um, and like just Zeus the board. Like that's... That's what a lot of it came down to, if I'm being honest. Um, and then we're playing three Sleepy. Like I said, the most I ever drew off of these was four cards. I had two underneath a Plump, so I drew two, and then I did Leap to draw four. That was uh, round seven, game one against uh, Branded. We popped off that game. It was hilarious. One Delicious. This should be at three. Uh, if this was at three, we would have been able to OTK much easier. And then I'm not playing Talents, ladies and gentlemen. We're playing two Starter. So, yeah, the second Starter was dead at some points, but it's another Speller, uh, another spell that you can grab almost said Spell or Trap. It's another spell that you can grab with Plump's effect. Um, and I just wanted to have the two so that I had a higher likelihood than just playing one to be able to have some sort of play that I can make. Because like a lot of times, with like I said, with my terrible luck, that I would open up a hand that's a brick, but I at least have starter. So I know that I at least have lines. So, you know, even if I open up like oh, just a whole purely engine, I go summon Lily Activate Effect and they go Ash. 
If it's talents, like let's just say that this was talents in that situation, right? If it's talents, I can go, okay, activate, draw two. And then it's like, if I draw two bricks, I'm still losing. Whereas if it's starter, then like I go Lily, they go Ash. I'm like, okay, cool, chain starter. And now I can go blue, I can do searches, and then like they've already wasted their ash, so I know it's gonna go through. So I really loved starter. I did not ever wish it was talents or thrust. Like to me too, like I was also expecting more droll, and I actually I only ever got drolled once, which is actually really funny now that I think about it. Um like it helps you play through droll because like if you know I search something and they go droll. Like, if this is a talent, it's like, what am I going to do? See your hand, and then I'm ending on a Lily and passing? Like, I just, I love starter. You could take out one for a talent if you want. I wouldn't blame you. Um, but that was my mindset behind it. And then one call by one foolish. Uh, foolish was actually a last minute addition because you can dump angler and have all the plays. Uh, for the traps, three imperm. Yes, two are gold and one are super. That's going to piss somebody off. Uh, and then your two god cards. <laughs> Leap and double cross. So now we can kind of explain how this deck functions if you didn't see my other video about purely sprite. So here's what's hilarious about double cross, ladies and gentlemen. The purely exceeds require two level twos. So in a situation where you have like leap and double cross and you have a purely exceed that doesn't have a level one purely, you can go activate double cross, declare that you're gonna use the effect to target a monster on either field or grave attached to a rank two material. You target a level one purely in your grave, attach it to one of your rank two purely, like say like plump, and then on a new chain, or even just, you know, do leap chain like one, double cross chain like two, you end up with the same thing. Uh, you activate leap, target, say, the plump, you go for noir, your noir is now a quick effect because you now have the level one purely. That's how you get to your level one purely as a material because you can use the double cross. Or you can just go like what I did against one of my cast tier matchups, I think. Uh, I went double cross to take their Fenrir to put it in the zone that Sprint was pointing to. So, like... I got a couple weird looks at my end boards as like people were like watching my matches because they'd be like, why the fuck is this dude ending on a gigantic sprite with one material and Sprin with other stuff? Because these cards are disgusting. Like Sprint is an interrupt with the trigger, detach a material, bounce to your hand. Like it's, oh, it, it, these are God cards. Like these are straight up God cards. Um, for the extra deck, we are playing two copies of Plum. A lot of people were cutting one Plum to play Mannequin Cat. I kid you not, kid you not. I read Mannequin Cat seven times before this regional, and I kept asking myself the same thing. How in the nine hells does this card help you OTK? I do not want to give my opponent shit. Like, yeah, like, if it revives a monster, and, like, you can get one out, and, like, you can go Delicious Memory in that case, but, like, Delicious isn't one. So I don't really feel like Mannequin Cat is as good as Plump. I'd rather be able to go into Plump, attach two materials, like, let's say you do two Pretty Memories. Attach two Pretty Memories, and then I can just start building up materials to go into a Noir. To me, I just felt like Plump was just the more optimal choice, and it paid off. Like, double Plump came up a lot. I was like, thank God this is not Mannequin Cat. Like, no, absolutely not. Uh, two copies of Beauty. People read this card, like, six times. They kept on, I, I don't know, it's an effect failure, bro, but people read, people read the card, like, six times. Uh, one Happiness. Uh, the Searching came up. Bro, this Searching is a damage set, by the way. So, uh, in the match where I played against Brandon, I got a draw. Um, I actually called over Judge, and I said, does this happen in damage step? And he's like, yes. I'm like, oh, good. So, I was able to search, I think, like, twice off the Happiness before... Uh, I, it either got popped or I think he took it with talents or something. I think I was locked under two, so I wasn't able to make Zeus. But yeah, this happens in damage step, and so does the My Friend. It's like I knew My Friend did, but uh, yeah, it was just disgusting. Um, and then two Noir. It actually didn't come up that often. Like I said, I lost a lot of die rolls. I was going second a lot in game ones. Um, yeah, it, like I, I actually don't think there was ever a match where I won just sitting on a Noir, which is actually really weird to say. Uh, one Downard because it's good. Uh, one Gigantic. I want to make this two, but you just don't have the space. Like, it's part of your going first end board. I don't really feel like you need a second one. Uh, one to Gym Buster. This this thing's good. Um, let's see. And then two Zeus. I mean, it's it's Zeus. Then we're playing one Sprint because it's it's amazing. Uh, Mascarena <laughs> because we're playing this. <laughs> so f funny story about this. Um, this card came up three times in the regional, and it was disgusting every time. Against the Purely Mirror, I shot down the Masquerina because I didn't know if he had Pretty Memory. If he did, then, like, he could have just negated the Masquerina, and I never would have got to Underworld Goddess. But every time I dropped this out, minus the Purely Mirror, uh, people, like, got a 404 error on their head. Like, I could just tell. Like, they were so confused while I was going Masquerina effect, suck up one of your monsters. And they were just like, what? And then I drop out Underworld Goddess, and I'm like, oh. So against Sword Soul, which is actually a buddy of mine here in Jacksonville that I played at Locals all the time. We drove four and a half hours to play each other like it's Locals. Um, game two, I went uh, Link off, 
Take your Baron, because it was the only other thing he had on board after I got him to use the nine pillars and tribute the Chow Fang. Make Underworld Goddess swing for 3k. And he's just like, yeah, he draws to like two in hand. He goes, yeah, you got it. So Underworld Goddess was disgusting. It, it, you you got to play this card if you play this deck. Next up, for the side deck, uh, we're playing three Santa Claus. Um, Santa Claus is okay. It came up like once in the Purely Mirror. Other than that, I actually never really drew it. But it's very good. I, I love it for breaking boards. Um, there was never a time where I wished it was something else. I know some people side deck Deck Debbie in this deck. Um, I never really wanted Deck Debbie, to be honest. But um, I just I feel like Santa Claus is a good kaiju in this deck. It would... Um, it, it helped break boards. I don't really know what else to say about it. Uh, two Ghost Bell. <laughs> this came up once. <laughs> when it did, it was disgusting. So, uh, in the branded matchup, I think it was like round five or six, whatever it was, where I had a draw after game two. Um, I started making plays, and he goes Sanctifier, Target, Albaz, and something else. I go Chain Ghost Bell. And once again, he 404 errored above his head. And he's like, I could tell his brain was like, this is an interaction. I didn't test for this interaction. This is actually a thing. So we were able to stop it. And it was just, it, it was so good. That was also the same match where uh, he did Sanctifier and all that. And then he goes Brain Diffusion. And the one card I had in hand was Ash. And he goes, nice. That's a pro play right there. I'm like, yes, sir, it is. Resonator. <sighs> this came up last round. And yet there was still like 30 seconds left on the clock. And like I could have played Beauty and Defense. But I probably still would have lost. If I could have held on to one of the two Sleepy Memories that I opened up with, I probably could have won that match and been 6-1-1. But Resonator's good. The times it came up, it didn't really matter. Uh, two Cosmic and Feather Duster. <laughs> Feather Duster won us the match against Dino Morphia. Like, that's the only reason why I won that. Um, the Cosmics actually never came up, surprisingly. Um, and then three copies of Evenly Match. Um, this card's amazing, this format. I don't care what anyone says. And the D-Barriers actually never came up. There's a shit ton of branded at this regional. I never once drew D-Barrier. Not once. Don't know if it's just because I went second a lot or what, but yeah, I just, I never drew it. So... Guys, that is my deck. The Like I said, the changes I would make is somehow, some way, shape, or form, you've got to play Gamma Burst in this deck, whether it's, you know, card number 42, or, you know, you throw it in the side and place a Santa Claus, whatever it is, um, you've got to fit Gamma Burst in this deck. Um, I feel that that's really going to help with OTKing, especially whenever you're going second. Um, but... Guys, let me know uh, anything else that you want to know in the comments below. What, oh, one other thing I will mention is uh, one little fun interaction I like to do is go uh, Gigantic Sprite. So I would summon out the Gigantic, and I would activate the effect and ask the opponent for a response. They say no. I would chain a purely quick play spell for my hand, ask them for a response. They would, if they have no response, I'm like, okay, cool. Like If they're not negating the Gigantic, they're probably not going to negate the quick play. And then you can ditch like whatever kind of card, get out your level one Lily, and then you can detach off the Gigantic and go for blue. So you're able to get your one special summon from your uh, purely quick play spells before you're locked into twos by chaining the quick play spell. And then you can chain block from that point because you can do like Lily chain link one, and if you get out blue off Gigantic, then you can do uh, blue chain link two. Or even just go for like Lily and then use Gigantic to go for red so that you're insulated from hand traps on the Lily. So that was a really fun interaction I like doing that I think not a lot of people saw coming. Uh, I was hoping that people would misplay because they didn't understand what my deck was, but I, I don't really think anyone misplayed because of that. I think it was just the fact that they would have like an Ash or an Imperm or something and I could just play through it because Sprite is just literally a gas engine. So uh, yeah, I've already had a, a buddy of mine ask me if he could steal my list. Here's my list, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a super fun event. I'm so happy to have had my invite now. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I need to figure out if I'm going to play this at Nats or if I'm just going to play Sky Striker. So, guys, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.